welcome to Introduction to Foundation Directory Online, the essential version. My name is Sarah Rice, I'm a librarian here at Forefront. Again, if you want to, please feel free to introduce yourselves into the chat or you know, put any questions you have there as well. Before we get started, I'm actually going to share a quick poll just to kind of see where everybody is on uh, their use of this platform before. Uh, I have not actually used a poll before, so please let me know if anything seems to go wrong with this, but it should just be one simple question. Uh, we're asking whether or not you have used Foundation Directory Online Essential in the past. So just kind of want to know where everybody is on that front. So we'll give everybody a minute or so to answer the question. All right, looks like just about everybody has voted. If you haven't, just, you know, I'll give you another moment here. I'm just kind of trying to see what everybody's past experiences are, uh, who's used this before and who not. All right, so looks like We have about half of everybody has has not used Foundation Directory Online Essential at all. Uh, there are a few people who have. That's great to know. So if you have used it in the past and you have any kind of deeper questions, please feel free to drop those in the chat so that we can uh, address those. And for everybody who hasn't, hopefully this will uh, address your res uh, results. All right. Well then kind of roll into things. First, just a little bit about Forefront for anybody who may not be totally familiar with us. Forefront is a statewide membership organization for Illinois for nonprofits, grant makers, advisors, and other allies. Uh, we just want to get everybody kind of at the same table. So we want everybody in one room so that that networking and education all can work a little easier in that way. Uh, so the library is part of that. We are officially what's known as a special library. Uh, that means our collection is specialized, in our case focused wholly on nonprofit resources. Uh, we are also a member of the Funding Information Network uh, through Candid. They used to be known as Foundation Center, if you're familiar with them. Uh, through that kind of partnership, we have access to a lot of their trainings, uh, access to Foundation Directory Online, and some of their other resources. Um, Oh, I still have the old URL on here. Uh, it says Grant Space, but they rebranded a little while ago and it is Candid Learning now. So it is learning.candid.org for some of their, uh, their webinars, their other kinds of services as well, some sample documents and those sorts of things. All right. Thank you to everybody who is still joining in. Uh, we are just getting started. So you have not missed a whole lot as of yet. Uh, the library, at Forefront is still an online only presence at this time. Uh, hopefully one day we will all get to meet again at our new digs down at uh, 200 Ma West Madison Street. Uh, but at the moment we are an online only uh, existence. <clears throat> now, at the end of this training, you should be able to know what Foundation Directory Online Essential is, be able to identify exactly what you kind of need to know going in find prospects based on kind of subject searching or searching for individual organizations, evaluating those organizations, see what kind of fit they are, and identify your options for accessing and getting help with the database. Uh, yes, I can definitely send out uh, these slides. Uh, recording will take a little bit. Our lovely friends in communications have to kind of clean it up a little bit, uh, cut off some of the ends where we're just kind of introducing ourselves and all of that. Um, but yes, we should be able to send those out, uh, Cindy. So thank you for asking. All right. So technical details about the database. It is 
We are talking just about the essential version of Foundation Directory Online. Uh, we will not be really discussing the professional version uh, at this time. However, it is still a very in-depth sort of database, has profiles on thousands of grant makers out there, both independent foundations, public charities, and company sponsored foundations. Um, it is updated on a daily basis, not the whole thing. So you can, uh, when you look at a profile, see when it was last updated. So you can kind of get a sense of how current uh, information is for any given organization, but there is work being done on it on a constant basis. And as Crystal asked, so uh, I assume you're asking about FDO Essential. Uh, in that case, currently, Candid, the people who publish it, are making access to it free to everyone, uh, not just nonprofits. It's just a database that is of most use to nonprofits. Um, so if you're wanting to get access to it directly for your own searching, uh, we'll cover that a little later when we talk about access, uh, but you will just be able to email us for a link to it. Or if you are far away, if anybody is well outside of uh, the kind of immediate area around Chicago, if you're you know, in another state perhaps, I doubt anybody is, but if you are, uh, you can also talk to us and we'll tell you uh, what funding information network partner, what library is near you who can provide that sort of access. Um, that, is, that is how that is going to work. So FDO, FDO Essential, gets its data from a number of places. Uh, it can be drawn from grantmaker websites, those who have them, annual reports, any kind of published information on guidelines, you know, any kind of press about them, uh, federal government grant grants, direct reporting from grantmakers. There is a program uh, that is called e-reporting. So if anybody on this call happens to actually be associated with a foundation, uh, please contact us about that e-reporting program. It is kind of a great thing where you can be very transparent and very up to the moment on uh, any of your grant making and any of your kind of priorities. And it lets that data be accessible to nonprofits to get a sense of whether or not uh, their missions are a good fit with yours. Uh, there's also a website there if you wanted to actually look in detail about all of the places they draw any data from. You can see them there. I believe there's a couple dozen different kind of little uh, bits and pieces uh, for where they get all of their information. Uh, but those are kind of the primary ones there. So when you're thinking about searching this particular database, the kind of first place to start is always with knowing yourself. Uh, knowing yourself, knowing your organization, where you're starting from, what it is you're doing, what it is you need. So think about who your community is, who is it you're serving, who is it you're helping, you know, where are the people you're helping located, uh, where is it you are doing your work, is it in your immediate area where your organization is located, do you work statewide, do you work with, you know, only in particular areas, or do you have kind of a broad focus geographically? And what exactly are you doing? What are your programs? What are your goals? What is your mission? And how does this all kind of tie together? So when you're, once you've kind of thought about that and have really good answers to those kind of questions so that you, know, you could grab somebody's attention if they asked you, so what is it you do? You'd have kind of that hook to, uh, <laughs> to give back to them. That is where you kind of start searching. And the main kind of searching done in FDO is often subject-based, based around what it is your organization does. Uh, are you an arts organization? Do you do uh, work with education? Uh, do you, you know, work in kind of human services? Any of those kinds of areas. Now, the very front page of Foundation Directory Online, which I'll show you uh, once I get through the slides, we'll actually do kind of a little demo to show you what it looks like. Uh, but the front page here has a very simple search bar. You can, if you wish, uh, treat it like Google and just kind of put in your search. However, this database indexes all of its information, files it under a very specific language. And so if you just type in your search in your own words, the database will then try to translate your search into the terms that it uses to file everything under. And that can lead to some miscommunication or some very odd results. So we frequently tell people to click that link on the side that says advanced search, uh, because that gives you a little more control over what you're searching. It gives you all of these boxes here. Uh, this is another screenshot from the database. So if you do advanced searching, 
you get all of these boxes. You do not need to fill in all of them. In fact, it is generally not a good idea to fill in all of them. You're going to fill in just the ones that kind of give a broad sense of what it is your organization does and what it is you are looking for funding about. Uh, the most popular boxes to use are those up there in that top row. Uh, your subject area, we've talked a little bit about that. Uh, in this case, we've used the example of out of school learning. Uh, this is also an example of how the database has its own kind of particular terms. Uh, you might say after school programming, that is a form of out of school learning. Uh, so those are all kinds of things that can be a little tricky when you are searching the database. Uh, if anyone is particularly interested in looking at exactly what terms are in the database, uh, you can go to a website that is taxonomy.candid.org. And I will actually drop that into the chat uh, just because I don't necessarily want to kind of spell that with like the phonetic alphabet or something to try and make sure it's clear. Uh, but that website lets you look at all of the terms that are officially used in the database. So you can kind of see what is exactly there. Geographic focus, also very commonly used. That is where you are doing your work. Uh, that is frequently where your organization is located or at least nearby. Uh, you can start fairly narrow on searches for this. Uh, you'll note we're using Chicago as our example here. Uh, technically with Chicago, you can try to put in neighborhoods as a slightly even more specific search, but most things aren't indexed that way. They aren't filed that way. So they don't generally come up as easily. So you're going to miss uh, good matches as well. You're probably going to narrow things down a little too much if you start that specific, um, but you can certainly give it a try and see what you get. Uh, city, though, is usually as narrow as I kind of recommend people start. You can search by county. Uh, you can also search by state. Um, do not try to just search United States. I know a lot of people want to look for kind of national level funders, funders that fund everywhere in the country. Um, however, while those funders are in here, um, if you search geographic focus of United States, you get funders who fund anywhere in the United States. That includes funders who fund nationally, but it also includes anyone who funds any part of the United States. So you'd also get people who fund only in Maine or Nebraska or <laughs> something that is probably a lot less helpful for your searches. Um, so the database has on file a lot of past grants. And since it's working with kind of the premise that a lot of past giving tends to predict future giving very well, uh, it's usually kind of recommended to look at funders who have funded at least in your general area, if not your specific area. Uh, if you're downstate, if you're in kind of Southern Illinois, uh, you might still want to look for the entire state to see funders who have funded uh, Illinois and who are op open to funding the state of Illinois. Um, they may not have funded in your particular county, but that is often kind of a point that you can make in a proposal that, you know, they say they're funding the state of Illinois and here's an opportunity to expand their reach to other parts of the state they haven't funded uh, recently. Um, but that is geographic focus. It is kind of where you are doing your work. Population served, that is frequently not used with subjects um, just because it can narrow the search a little too much. Uh, like if you were looking for elementary education, you don't need to also put in children because it's kind of assumed that elementary education involves children. Uh, however, sometimes you want to narrow things down or sometimes you'll want to search for your population group without the subject area at all. Uh, so if you wanted to see organizations that, you know, funded work with veterans, uh, if you do a lot of different kinds of programming with kids, you might search just with children. Um, so you can kind of use those to kind of search for organizations that fund uh, programs dealing with certain populations uh, kind of broadly. Then some of those others that aren't filled in for this sample search or organization name, if you want to look up specific funders, if you wanted to see what a profile for you know, the Chicago Community Trust looked like, you can search them by name. <clears throat> so that kind of helps with that. So <clears throat> you can search by location. So if you wanted to see, you know, funders who are located in a particular area. So if you wanted to see if there were any 
company sponsored foundations near you, you can do that. Um, if you wanted to kind of see, you know, who is it that's located in a particular legislative district or anything kind of, of that nature, you could do that as well. So all of those sorts of things can kind of work together that way. Um, who's who? That's basically organization name, but for people. Um, so you can kind of look up individuals. Uh, that can be a little tricky just because um, that can, there are a lot of people in the world who have very similar names. Uh, so it can be a little hard to know if the one person you're looking up is the person who shows up in results. However, uh, you can do that. Like if you've met someone at a networking event, you can't quite remember the name of the organization. Uh, trying to look them up that way uh, can help out as well. Support strategy is generally how you are doing certain work. So if you are specifically looking for building support or, you know, um, leadership development, some of those things on how you're going to be looking at uh, your needs, that is kind of what works best. Transaction type, pretty much not done on a lot of searches just because it's narrowing things in a way that most people aren't very interested in. But if you were, say, looking specifically at in-kind gifts, you might use that. Organization type, again, unless you're doing kind of a broad landscape search for all of the, you know, company sponsored foundations in a particular area, you're probably not going to use organization type as well either. EIN, organization name, but more specific. If you have their EIN, you can look up a specific organization um, that way as well. Keyword search, we often uh, kind of advise against keyword searching just because keywords can be very, very tricky. Uh, keywords look for that term in anywhere in a profile. So you might see it pop up somewhere in like their limitations with them saying something they specifically don't do. Uh, or my favorite example, uh, we were actually watching someone give tips on how to uh, search the database and they searched a keyword of cheese. Um, this brought up some results. It brought up a couple that were labeled as being transportation related, which seemed a little strange. Uh, we then got into the, the kind of details of it and it looked like they were for uh, maintenance of a highway that had cheese in its name, which was not going to be useful for anyone. Um, so keyword searching, if there is something your organization is doing that is very important, kind of central to your, your programming, uh, and it doesn't seem to fit in any of the other boxes, go ahead and try a keyword search. Uh, social emotional learning works pretty well as a keyword, uh, but frequently try to stay away from that and look for the terms that kind of uh, are similar to what you're doing in the other boxes. Then the slider bars. If you want to make sure that something's been a recent priority of an organization, you can use that year slider bar to make sure you're only looking at recent years. Uh, make sure to give it at least some leeway though, um, between uploading tax forms and getting them filed and getting them processed. There's quite a bit of lag time between when a grant was made and when any information about it can be collated into an organization's profile. Uh, so give it at least a few years there. Don't try to search for things from 2020 because um, there's just not going to be a lot in the way of results there. All right. And you can do those searches even though uh, when you get your results, they will look like this in FDO Essential, um, where you'll note that there are two kind of grayed out boxes. Uh, these are kind of give you the information about your results. So we had 39 grant makers in the results list. And you'll see that there are not details available in this version of the database for grants or for recipients. So you don't see grant details and you do not see recipient details. Those are facets that are limited to the professional version of the database. Uh, you can still do some of that searching on, you know, the kind of common grant sizes they give, uh, because there are a couple of charts that give kind of typical grant amounts done by the organization. Um, but those details are not viewable in this version of the database. However, you can look at grant maker profiles in detail. When you're going to do that, you're generally evaluating these to see what kind of fit they are for your organization. You're going to look at the funders requirements, see what their limitations are, make sure what you're asking doesn't 
run afoul of what they say they absolutely don't do. Make sure that you know their current mission statement kind of meshes well with yours and your plans and your you know priorities. Make sure that you know. That then you uh, finally kind of check to see if you know anyone uh, who is associated with that funder. Uh, there's a section in each profile that kind of talks about staff that we'll look at as we kind of look at some of the other screenshots for these. So as I mentioned, trends chart. This is just the very top of a profile. Uh, kind of gives you a little bit of information there. And in fact, I'm actually going to, I'm going to skip ahead on my slides because I'm going to do an actual search for you in the database and we can go over kind of the parts of the profile as we look at it there. Um, so we're going to kind of skip past a few slides here because we'll talk about that when we do an actual search live. We'll skip to the part we're talking about where you can access things. So since this is FDO essential and since the publishers candid are making it currently freely available, you can pretty much access it from anywhere. Uh, you do need to contact us to get an access link uh, because Candid is trying to keep some statistics on how people are accessing it and how many and all of that. Uh, so we don't have it just as a link on our website. You do have to actually email us, uh, but you can just email library at myforefront.org and ask for the access link to FDO Essential. Uh, if you also visit our uh, website, library.myforefront.org, uh, there's a box pretty centrally located on the website that has a email us link in it to specifically ask about FDO Essential. Um, so you can contact us directly for that. If you are well outside the Chicago area, if you are, you know, a couple hundred miles away, if anybody out there is, is very much not local, if you're out in Ohio or something, <laughs> I doubt anybody is, but if you are, uh, let us know that. We will probably direct you to uh, another library who is physically closer to you. Um, Candid kind of prefers that libraries who are in kind of a service area for organizations help them out. Uh, so we'll probably just give you the contact information for someone a little physically closer to you who will be able to provide the same access. Uh, that's why your local library is listed there, is that they can provide these links as well. Uh, and also, some libraries are reopening at this time. Uh, ah, yes. Someone asked for the email in the chat. That's a good idea as well. So I just will put that there while I'm thinking of it. <clears throat> so also some libraries are reopening on you know timed bases where people can go in for you know 30 minutes or on kind of a limited basis where a certain number of people are allowed in at a time. Um, so if you're wanting to kind of use something in person, uh, you can also check through the publishers of the database through Candid and see if there is a library near you uh, that is currently offering in-person services. Uh, I just put the, the link to that web page in the chat. If you go there, you can put in your zip code and see if there's a library near you and contact them to see if they are offering any kind of in-person services. Because I know some are. Um, it's just kind of a little touch and go on exactly how they're offering them at this time. Right, so that is kind of access, then help with it. If you need kind of any more uh, instruction or FAQs or that sort of thing, Candid has their own quick guide. Um, when I send out these slides, you'll be able to click on these links. Or if you're you know, watching this somewhere where you can take a screenshot, feel free to do that right at this point so you can have those links to access later at your convenience. Um, like I said, Candid has their own quick guide talking about accessing FDO. Uh, that one's focused a little more on the professional, uh, but it does have some, you know, a lot of the search rules are very similar. Uh, and then I have a couple of YouTube channels. Candid, of course, has their own and Forefront has our own, uh, where we both have put up videos about this database, as well as a lot of other topics. So if you want to see, you know, Forefront you want to see us talk a little more about prospect research or if you'd like to see us you know if you'd like to see our ask a consultant series if anybody has attended any of those sessions or had any interest in them uh, they've talked about you know hr issues they've talked about hiring grant writers uh, and those recordings are also available on forefront's youtube channel uh, so please feel free to jump in and watch videos there as well uh, 
yes, I will hopefully be sending out the recording of the session. It will, uh, there will be a bit of delay on that because it will need to be uh, processed a bit first, but yes, I will be sending that out as well as the slides. So you will have those. All right, so here's some of our contact information. If you want something besides that, uh, the email that I put into the chat, again, feel free to take a quick screenshot of that if you want. Uh, that has our website, library.myforefront.org, the email I mentioned to specifically ask about FDO essential access. Um, so feel free to contact us. Now I am going to switch my screen share so that I can now show you how to actually do one of these searches. All right. Okay. So here we go. All right. So hopefully everybody is at this point seeing the window for Foundation Directory Online Essential. You'll see it titled up here in the top left. Uh, if anybody is not seeing that database, please let me know in the chat so I can attempt to fix that. Uh, but if we are good to go, we will do a search and talk about those kinds of results. All right, so as I mentioned, and showed in that screenshot that was in the slides, there is a simple search bar here. You can feel free to try that out. Um, generally, again, it's based a lot on kind of uh, machine learning. And while it takes a lot of tries and a lot of time for uh, computer learning to really get to a very high degree of accuracy. so. Feel free to try it out to see how it works for you, but would recommend going to advanced search. Because uh, again, that will give you boxes. And so here you can fill in as many of them as are needed to describe what it is you are looking for. So a lot of these are drop down menus. So if you're looking at subject area, you can scroll through all of that. Anything that's got the little down pointing carrot branches into more specific subsections. So if you wanted to do, you can start a search very broad or you can start it very narrow. And that kind of just depends on whether you want to cast a very wide net to start with or if you want to cast a very, you know, very narrow one and uh, broaden your results afterwards. So the example search we had been doing in these slides had been for out of school learning which I have now, there we go, totally lost <laughs> the plot on where to find. So you'll note that being able to scroll through it is very handy. Uh, <laughs> in case you have forgotten like me where it's from, you can also start to type a word into this box uh, to see if it will bring it up. Um, but that can also be a little tricky if you don't know what all of the words in the database are. So scrolling is often kind of your friend there. Geographic focus. You can type in to that bar. Again, you can start with a city. You can start very broad with you know, county or state. Um, we'll stick with that. Population served. Again, don't necessarily have to do that to start with, but you can. Um, the example search that was in the slides was this one, so we will stick to it being the same. I believe the only slider I didn't really go over much there was grant amount. If you're wanting to see an organization, if you're only looking for organizations that are giving out grants of a certain size or have in the past, you can click on those numbers and change them to what you need them to be. Uh, definitely click on them. Slider bar is very, very sensitive. All right, we are not going to bother with that though at this point, we are just going to search. All right, so this might be a little familiar. This is the results that were also screenshotted in these slides. So again, as noted, you do not get to see grant details or recipient details in the FDO essential version. Uh, those are limited to the professional version. However, you do get to see the grant maker profiles. So if we want to look at those in more detail, 
we can click view all. Right. And so on this screen, you can see a little bit of information about any of the funders who came up in the search, their name, where they're located, their total assets, uh, that is going to be from the most recent 990 in the database. Uh, so that's going to be the number from whatever uh, 990 is most recently uploaded there, um, possibly 2018, um, possibly a little earlier, depending on how uh, frequently a particular profile has been updated. All right, so I will talk about the professional version in just a little bit though. So we're gonna go through these results first. I do see that question and it is an important one. So you're looking at these, little bit of information about it. Total assets, total giving are from the most ni recent 990 on file. The amount funded and the grant count are related to the search. This is supposed to be the amount funded over the number of grants given in the specific top areas that were searched. So that is kind of where that comes out. <clears throat> so for any of these, we can go in and look at them in more detail. So if we do something like that, you can see a little information about the organization, their name. Uh, if they have a website uh, that is known by this particular version and known by this database, it will be here at the top. Um, a lot of foundations, especially smaller foundations or especially family foundations will frequently not have their own website. But if they do, it'll be linked up here at the top. Then you have these little trend maps that give kind of an overall picture of what the organization has been doing recently. Uh, this is the last five years. So it gives you kind of the topics they generally fund, where they generally fund, and what size their grants typically are. So you can kind of get a sense of those ranges, even if you're not going to see details in this version. Uh, the darker a state is on the map, the more they have funded there. So you can kind of clearly see that Illinois is where most of the funding from this particular, uh, where this particular funder is and what is being funded uh, to what degree. So subjects, these are things that are attached to how grant information about the organization has been indexed. So these are uh, all of the things that have come up with uploading information about this organization into the database. Their about statement, their about kind of background, you can get a little information about their mission and their uh, information about them there, as well as sometimes their specific program areas as well. <clears throat> this can vary wildly depending on the foundation. Um, so sometimes you'll see a lot of detail here. Uh, sometimes there will only be a very little. This kind of depends on the organization and what is uh, available about them. So other funders to consider, these are foundations that the computer through an algorithm feels are overall very similar to the one that we're looking at right now. Uh, so if you do a search and you only have a few results, uh, but they are very good results, you might check this sort of box to see if any of these will also be of interest to you. Then you have their application section. So you'll see kind of their details about how they want to be approached, what information they need, what it is they expect to see. Um, so they would like you to send them a letter asking for an application form. Um, that, is, that is how they want to initially be contacted. So that is kind of how they state it there. And as we tend to go over in all of our sessions, uh, if you are asking for funding from a grant maker, it is best practices to follow kind of any specific rule they outline about how they wish to be uh, approached or contacted. Giving limitations, you'll note here, they primarily give in Chicago, um, though, as we can tell from the map, not solely. <laughs> so they do do some giving that is not there, uh, primarily doing a lot of work in that sentence. They, however, don't give any grants outside the continental United States. Apparently hard luck for you if you are in Hawaii or Alaska for them, uh, or literally anywhere else in the world. So limitations can give you some information about that. Um, ah, someone asked if you are outside of Chicago, can you search Illinois, basically 
removing Chicago? Unfortunately, no. We have asked the publishers of this database for a number of years uh, for that particular functionality. We would very much like to be able to do searches uh, and remove Chicago from results to see who's funding anywhere other than right here. Um, but that is not currently a possibility. You can search for Illinois, uh, but then you do kind of have to manually go through the profiles to see which ones say Metro Chicago or say primarily Illinois, uh, but have in practice simply only funded in and around Chicago. Uh, it does make it a little more time consuming. But that is currently how that kind of is structured. Um, we and some people from other large metro areas have uh, asked because we do think it would be extremely beneficial, but that is not currently a feature in the database. <clears throat> so moving on down the profile, financials. If you want to see 990s from them, you can grab them from here. Um, however, a lot of this uh, is only kind of extra useful if you want to see older 990s, uh, because very recent 990s are generally uh, easily accessible through the IRS database, uh, which is publicly available and specifically collects the most recently on file 990s. Uh, but if you're doing kind of historical information or comparisons, you can often grab much older 990s from here as well. Who's who I mentioned. So if you wanted to see kind of people who are associated with the organization, you can get some of that information here. See if there's anybody you know or anyone on your board knows. Uh, occasionally, you will come across someone who has a LinkedIn icon next to their name. That will actually allow you to, if you are logged in to LinkedIn, look at their LinkedIn profile to see if you have any connections in common, uh, which can be a helpful thing as well. Then down at the bottom, any other kind of contact information. So if it's an organization that does not have a website, you'll probably have a telephone number, perhaps an email, uh, or at the very least, the physical address so that if they are the kind of organization that wants a physical letter, you know where to send it. So let's go have all the information in a profile. Uh, if we go back up to the top, there are tools over here on the top right. So you can save these. You can save them individually as PDFs. So if you're on your own computer, that might be the best way to go. Uh, if you're visiting a public library, if you don't have a very good internet connection at your home, uh, or we're talking about the future when people can regularly be out and about. Uh, you can email PDFs to yourself or to anyone else if you wanted to share them. Uh, those are kind of the main tools that are of use there. You can also, from the Grantmaker results where you have all of the list, you can select multiple ones. So if you wanted to select several at a time, you can also use the tools from the results page. So again, you could save them combined so that you have the PDFs uh, profiles of all four of those organizations together. Uh, however, when you do that, it will ask you if you want to save the profiles, that long list of information that we just scrolled all the way through, or if you want a list. The list view is just this one line of information that we see here on the results page. Uh, however, if you save as a list, you can save up to 100 results at a time. Uh, whereas if you are saving profiles, you can only save 10 at a time. You can do both of those things multiple times if you want to save a bunch of things. Um, but profiles, because of their size, uh, can only be saved 10 at a time. Uh, it used to be 25 at a time, and it was just, it was frequently just not good, where the, the results would not load properly, where you'd have a lot of times where those maps would just kind of have spinning circles, uh, where full information just did not load. So they cut down kind of the number of profiles you could save at a time to limit that sort of uh, issue or difficulty. So profiles can save 10 at a time because they're very large. Lists are just this one line of information, but you can save up to 100 results at a time. You can also, if you don't like PDFs, save an Excel file, a CSV that can be saved as an Excel. With that, you also can save up to 100 results at a time and they are a little bit in between list and profile uh, because they have this line of information, but they also have the basic contact info. So they'll have phone number, website uh, info as well, just because they have that little bit of extra information about it. And that's what happens with the kind of Excel files. So that is kind of all of the saving of information there. And now we'll talk about a button that is of interest to a lot of folks. This right here that says exclude grant makers not accepting applications. 
everyone is probably fairly well aware that there are a number of foundations that will say they only give to pre-selected organizations or they only give grants by invitation and that sort of thing. Um, there can be a lot of reasons for that. Uh, however, that is certainly the case. Um, and so if you want to not see those organizations in your results list, you can click the little box and we'll filter them out. You'll know, took out a good chunk. We went from 39 to 22. Um, so the reason that filter box is back here rather than being on the kind of main search page is that the publishers of the database really want you to get at least a little bit of an idea about who those top matches are uh, that don't currently accept open applications before that they are filtered out because it's possible that it's going to be an organization where you do know someone or someone on your board knows someone, or it could be that you're doing leave my house now. It's a little bit of uh, longer term planning uh, so that you are kind of building up <clears throat> relationships for the future uh, for that sort of access. So you might be kind of planning ahead and want to put them down as organizations to kind of look into to see how you can network with them or build a relationship with them that could eventually lead to being one of their pre-selected uh, organizations or being invited to apply. Uh, so that's why it's back here is to make sure to keep those thoughts at top of mind uh, about who it is you might be contacting or who, you, who it is you might be a great fit with. Um, it's also possible that there are organizations that you can reach out to even if you're not applying to them at this point in time, if they're ones there where you know you want to talk to you know, a content a program officer just briefly to ask about what their sorts of requirements specifically are, or if you want to you know, start trying to follow them back on social media or share information about you know, an event you're doing, you think someone there might want to attend, you know, any of those kinds of bits and pieces that can kind of build relationships. Um, but again, not everybody wants to see that in all of their searches. So you can filter those out with the checkbox there and you'll get your results list uh, a little bit more streamlined. Now, you should still pay attention when you look through a foundation's profile, because uh, it is possible that they are one where they have kind of a mixed uh, attitude toward uh, open applications. Uh, it could be that they have multiple programs, and some programs are ones where they'll accept open applications and others aren't, or they might accept uh, open applications from a specific geographic area. Uh, so there still might be some caveats to that whole idea. Uh, so it's still good to make sure to look at the application section and they're giving limitations uh, to make sure that you're not going to run afoul of anything. So grant profiles are updated not on a strict basis. Uh, we'll open up that profile again for the Helen Brock Foundation. So at the top of every profile, you'll see some last updated information. When their profile was last updated, there was just over a year ago. So if they've had any substantial changes in their priorities, which they may have over the past year, um, you would probably want to make sure to talk to a program officer or anything to see what kind of their recent information is, or just kind of do you know new searching to see if there's been anything announced by them that's you know been uh, a change that they they have announced somewhere. Uh, since they're not an organization with their own website, if it's an organization with their own website, you can of course go there to see what their most recent announcements are. Uh, grant information, last updated last fall. Uh, so that is kind of the last time any of that information was updated for them. So any of this information about that is there. So that's the last time it was updated. Uh, that does not mean that the grant information that was uploaded was from 2020. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the information for that is drawn from 990s. Uh, so that is just the last time that was processed and uploaded. Um, does not specifically mean that it was 2020 grant information, unfortunately, because literally no foundation has filed their taxes that'll cover the year 2020, I believe at this point. Uh, so it's highly unlikely to get that sort of information. Um, Candid did do some very specific outreach uh, on both COVID relief and with uh, racial equity in the wake of the George Floyd protests. So there is more recent information from this past year in both of those categories. Um, 
So if you're looking for information on that, uh, and in fact, Candid actually has uh, entirely separate web pages dedicated to COVID relief and to racial equity searching. Um, so those are kind of also uh, housed in an entirely separate page to kind of focus on them. Uh, but yes, if you specifically kind of, you know, search COVID as a keyword, um, you're probably going to get a little more results than you might expect uh, because Canada did do some very specific outreach in those particular categories over the last year. Uh, they are looking at how to expand that into others to try to get a more real time uh, sort of look for the database, uh, but that is still a ways off. Uh, and someone a little while back asked about international funding. There is some international funding in the database. Um, if you look for funders who are located outside of the United States, you will get results. If you look for recipients who are located uh, outside the United States, you will get some results. Uh, international funding is very tricky to search uh, just because of kind of how some of those, uh, both how some of those grants work and just how some of the, the searching works. Um, frequently, you can kind of look at recipients in a particular area to see who has funded actual organizations elsewhere. Uh, so if you wanted to look at, you know, grant makers who were interested in funding, um, I believe I had, I had someone actually just a, last week who was interested in funding in Ghana. Uh, so you're looking at foundations who had funded recipient organizations located there, because uh, that is a pretty good indicator that they have an interest in funding in that area. Uh, it gets complicated when you're looking for funders who will fund an organization located here to do work internationally. Uh, that is a very kind of tricky sort of area. Frequently, we'll still do that sort of searching I just mentioned, looking at recipients located abroad, um, just because that will give you a little idea about funders who have a very specific interest in that location. Uh, you can also try to use geographic focus uh, for work being done abroad. Um, but again, that's going to be one where you're probably just going to try one of those types of searches for, you know, that sort of searching. Um, like I said, you can do geographic focus for work abroad. Uh, there are international relations for some categories. Uh, if you're working in one of those kind of areas that's a little more kind of policy or politics related, um, that is a subject category. You can try that sort of searching. It's just a little more hit or miss, especially if you're looking for actual international funders, uh, again, because they do not have the same sorts of um, rules to follow as the ones here. So it's a lot harder to try to pull information about them when you're trying to look for guidelines for an entirely different country. Uh, so international funding is always a very tricky sort of thing to search. So international relations, geographic focus, uh, if you are um, if you are a forefront member organization, and now I'll kind of segue into talking about FDO professional as well, since I've been mentioning recipients, and that's not something you can actually view uh, in this particular version of the database. <clears throat> so geographic focus, again, you can try to use that as interest in work abroad, so you can try to put it there. Uh, subject area, you can try to do the international relations part there as well. Um, if you are a forefront member organization, you are also welcome to email us to do research for you in the professional version of the database. Um, that is one of the types of remote research assistance that Forefront Library provides to Forefront member organizations. Uh, so if you're wanting to look at recipient lists, if you're wanting to look at grant detail lists, if you're wanting that sort of information, you can, if you are part of a Forefront member organization, email us those sorts of requests and we will send you information back about that. Uh, if your organization is not a member of Forefront, uh, you can use that link I had put in the chat, the uh, candid.org slash find us uh, to see if there is a library near you that has uh, reopened to a certain degree, uh, because if they are physically open, they will be providing, you know, uh, public access to foundation directory online. Um, so that is kind of how that works as far as accessing the professional version of the database goes. Uh, let me see what the other questions were because I knew there's been a couple that have popped up. Mm -hmm. All right, there is not, 
So if you have your own subscription, if your organization has their own dedicated subscription to Foundation Directory Online, you can set up uh, notifications. Uh, you can have a dashboard. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail there because that is not a feature we have and it's not a feature we can share. Um, but if you have your own organizational uh, subscription to Foundation Directory Online, you can set up notifications about things uh, for specific criteria. However, there is not a way to do that with either the shared version that we provide uh, information from the professional version of four members or the free essential version. Um, now, how often do you recommend running searches to find new opportunities? That just depends a little bit on how, how your own research goes. Um, again, I mean, there's always a chance that it will have just been updated, um, but really, You'll note that that profile for Helen B. Brock, it's been a year since the profile had been uh, updated and the grants now been updated since October, which is several months ago. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for, if you had no results and you're looking for something totally new, I mean, how, however, <laughs> I don't think there is really a hard and fast rule for how frequently you should look for kind of new opportunities there. Um, you'd probably be better served if there was nothing that came up in a search by trying to readjust what kind of searching you were doing or kind of thinking about if there's a different way um, to kind of talk about what you're doing where it might fit a different kind of subject category or you know look into other types of funding as well you know um, depending on where your organization is situated, you know, if you're a new organization, there's always kind of talk about fiscal sponsorship uh, information, uh, looking at individual donors, uh, other kinds of things there as well. So if there was like absolutely nothing that came up, I'd probably just rework a search instead. Uh, if you're just kind of looking for updates, yearly basis, quarterly basis, depends a little bit on how frequently you want to be sorting through things. Um, certainly not any more frequently than quarterly, probably yearly. Um, it's really going to depend a little bit on the on the search itself, on how likely it is that there's going to be new results. Uh, this is not a database that has RFPs. So if you're looking for actual requests for proposal, that's not something that is here. This is kind of giving you an idea about organizations, their profiles, their application process, uh, and how to contact them. Um, so that you can approach them about various things. It is not one that you're looking for up to the minute uh, requests for proposals. Um, so if you're looking for information like that, um, there are other kinds of databases that do try to collate that information, though there's nothing I'm aware of that is exhaustive. I mean, many foundations don't use an official RFP process. Um, so there's never going to be anything that's wholly comprehensive that way. Um, but Candid also has a website that is called Philanthropy News Digest. Uh, that has a uh, opt-in search tool for RFPs for foundations. So if you're wanting to kind of see some information about you know, open requests for proposal, you can see it there. Uh, GrantStation is a database that also has a free newsletter where you can get kind of weekly emails from them about uh, opportunities. Uh, so I believe Grant Gopher is another one that does that sort of work. So there are some other tools out there if what you're looking for are those far more frequently updated things. All right, costs or qualifications for Forefront membership. Oh, thank you for telling me you can see my pop-up for Teams. I unfortunately don't think I can turn that off at this point. We've only got a few minutes left, so just know that's happening, sorry. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> for Forefront membership, you can see that very easily on our website. Oh, make sure I type in the URL correctly. So if you visit us there on our join page, uh, it gives you kind of the information about membership. Uh, you can also kind of click the, the join uh, links and see the actual application, which has the um, list for the kind of uh, all of the kind of tiers of, uh, of payment. Uh, membership fees are based on your organization's annual budget, so they are kind of a sliding scale. Um, so you can kind of see what is kind of required there. 
Uh, and really, that's basically the only kind of cost for membership is that membership fee. There are no specific qualifications there, I don't believe. Um, <laughs> We are not currently physically open, uh, unfortunately. Um, again, if you're wanting to see if there is uh, a, another library near you that may provide access to, well, that if they are currently open, will provide access to Foundation Directory Online, you can use Candid's page uh, and search by your zip code there. That will give you information about organizations that you can contact, uh, but we are still currently not physically open. Um, and is there a way to search by deadlines or grant cycle? No, that is, that is not an option here. Uh, all of the ways you can search are on the screen right here. So there is not a built-in thing for grant cycle or uh, grant deadlines. Again, that profile for Helen V. Brock was last updated about a year ago. Uh, so it would not be very effective to try to search by their deadlines just because that is not information that is regularly uh, kind of kept up in this particular version of the database. Um, so that is kind of where that information uh, will go as well. So now grant cycles or deadlines are not uh, search tools that are effective in this particular database. All right, does anybody have any last questions? Hope I have not skipped anybody's there. Guess I will hit stop share at the moment. That way nobody will see my team's notifications anymore. All right. So if no one has any further questions, uh, thank you for being in a very engaged audience. I know some of you were super <laughs> uh, into uh, asking some questions there. So thank you for that. <clears throat> and if that is everything for everyone, you feel free to go have a great day. All right, Mr. Tyler, um, since you had tossed in a question there right at the mo last moment, um, yeah, if you just mean how many kind of requests can members make, um, yeah. it depends a little bit on exactly what's being asked. Like if you're asking for specific foundation profiles, we limit those to 20 a week. Uh, if you're just doing subject searching, we don't have a hard limit on that. Um, nobody's really taken advantage of that in a way that has felt, you know, uh, too much. So. Yeah. There's not a hard limit on a, we do this kind of work. Please do this search for us. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you. Great presentation. I'm Thank you. Working. All right. Bye. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye now.